Today I want to take a look at how we can make star trail images in Photoshop with images that we took with our camera. Now in modern days today, we usually like to set our digital cameras to something around a 30 second exposure and shoot a series of images one right after the next of the stars moving through the sky. Now, the problem is when you do that, what you're left with is a bunch of individual pictures, each representing a small part of the actual large star trail that you are trying to capture. So what we need to do is take those images and stack them and build a final star trail photograph. So what I've got here is a set of images that I took a few months ago, and I've got them imported into Lightroom. And if we take a look at the pictures, we can see if I go through them real slowly here, each image is a little segment of the stars moving through the sky. So again, this is a bunch of 30 second exposures. We wanna stack them on top of each other so we get little star arcs through the sky, which would be super cool. Now, to do this, it's very easy. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make any edits to the photos that you're hoping to make. So the images right now are raw. So right now we have all that nice raw editability that we can apply to these images very, very easily in Lightroom. So what I would recommend is if you need to do big changes like brightening, darkening, contrast, saturation, things like that. Do it right now and do it to one of these images and automate it to the rest of them so that all of the images are edited the same and they all look super consistent. Now, once you get them all edited and looking consistent, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these photos that are part of our star trail. So I'm gonna click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and I'm gonna go up to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, some people think that you wanna do the top one, which is edit in Photoshop. Edit in Photoshop is gonna actually open each photo as its own individual document. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna have it open each image on a layer all in one document. So what we're left with is essentially one Photoshop document with a big stack of images in that one document. And from there, we can play with it as far as how the stars shine through and we get those beautiful arcs. So again, photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, here's the part that's gonna be a little weird. For one, it doesn't look like the computer is doing anything. And if your computer is slow, it probably will look like it's doing nothing for quite a long time. Uh, for mine, it takes, you know, maybe a minute or two where it just looks like nothing's happening. It is working in the background. It just takes it a while to propagate through and to figure itself out before it shows you any sort of progress bar. Now, once it kind of figures itself out, it's going to take us into Photoshop, and then it's going to, once we're in Photoshop, you'll actually watch it in front of you, opening one image, stacking it, open another image, stack, third image, stack, fourth image, stack. You'll know it's done when the little spinning wheel of death, or whatever you wanna call it, the little hourglass is gone. Once it looks like it's not doing anything anymore and you're in Photoshop, you should be left seeing one picture in Photoshop, with a bunch of little layers over in the layers panel. And we'll come back right when that happens, but be prepared to leave your camera for a half hour if you're merging a few images, 20 minutes if you have a really fast computer, or even a few hours. I've merged you know, two, 300 images before at once, and you can expect to leave your computer for a very long time before you come back and things are done. So we'll just let this sit for a minute and we'll be back as soon as Photoshop is open and done with the stacking of the photographs. All right, and here we are back. So Photoshop has just finished stacking these images for us. And we know that because the computer's no longer doing anything. We can see there's no more images popping up over here in the layers panel on the right hand side. We can see that there are a big stack of images. Every one that I had selected in Lightroom has now been stacked in Photoshop. Now, the first thing I usually like to do is in Photoshop, I always like to double click the hand tool on the left hand side in the toolbar just to make the image as large as possible. That will size it up so that it fits nicely on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Now, all we have to do in Photoshop is actually very simple. If you know nothing about Photoshop, this is one of the best things you can do in Photoshop to start off with because it's very, very straightforward. There's nothing confusing, nothing uh, complicated about it. All we need to do actually is over here in the layers panel on the right. And I should say something, if you don't see your layers panel on the right hand side, you can go up to window and layers. All the panels are under the window menu. So if you ever lose one, you can very easily get to it just by going up to uh, window and then layers. So I've got my layers panel over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the very top layer. I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom layer and I'm going to shift click. So I'm selecting all of the layers in the layers panel on the right. Once they're all selected, 
at the very top of the layers panel, right above where you're selecting the layers, there's a little drop down box that says normal. And this is called a blending mode. And what this means is it's essentially how one layer interacts with another one. And blending modes are super advanced. They're super complicated the way that they work, but they're pretty darn cool. If you want to learn more about them, just look, there's lots of books on just blending modes and what they do. But in this case, very simple. All we need to do now that we have all of those layers selected is we want to change all of their blending modes to lighten. Lighten is going to allow the brightest things in each layer, or in this case, each image, to shine through to the top. Well, if we think about it, what's the brightest part of each image? It's the star. And the little star is moving image to image to image to image. So if we change the blending mode to lighten, that will mean that the bright stuff, i.e. the stars, will shine through to the top of the layer stack. So even one of these images that's way down below in the layer stack, if we change its blending mode to lighten, it will shine through, which is super cool. So we'll change that and watch instantly, once we do that, boom, there are our star trails. They, they came out of nowhere, which is super, super awesome. And that really is all there is to it. You take the images from Lightroom into Photoshop as layers, and then you change the blending mode to lighten. And there we have our star trail. Now, there's a couple things that we need to talk about from this point on. I am generally not a fan of flattening images because I think whenever you flatten the image, and flattening, for those of you who don't know, means you take all of the layers that you have there and you squish them down into one layer. It's not, once you save, you can't undo that decision. And in general, I'm not a fan of flattening because I think it's nice to be able to go back into the layers and change around things if you need to. However, with star trails, these images are so big, they're so large, that if you don't flatten, it really is taxing on your computer. So with star trails, my next step will be to go to the upper right hand corner up here, uh, upper right hand of the layers panel, excuse me. There's four little bars. I'm gonna go up there and I am going to the, go to the option that says flatten image. I'm gonna click on that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all of these layers on the right hand side. And like I said, it's going to squish them together and combine them into this thing called the background. It essentially squishes them all and we're left with one. And instead of having the file size of 30 or 40 or 300 layers or 300 images, we now only have the file size of one, which is much, much easier to deal with. It saves quicker and it's a lot easier. So now that we've got that done, all we gotta do because we got these images into Photoshop through Lightroom is go to File, Save, and we'll save the image. And then once we've saved it, we'll go to File, Close. So we'll File, Save it, and we'll File, Close it. And once we've done both of those things, if I go back to Lightroom, we can actually see that that final image, the star trail, is in Lightroom. And from here, now that it's this final image, now do keep in mind it's no longer a RAW file, it's now a TIFF or a PSD or however you have your preferences set. But now that we have this image back in Lightroom, we can very easily take it into the develop module and do some final tweaking. Again, I do most of my editing first because then you're editing the RAWs. But now that we're editing this final file, you know, I might want to do a little bit of cropping, come in, crop the bottom off, make it a pano. Maybe I want to give it a little bit of contrast, kind of mess with it a little bit and tweak it and make it the perfect photograph. So again, process wise, super, super simple. You take your images in Lightroom, you select them, you go to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. You wait for a while as your computer stacks everything, puts it on top of one another, makes that big layer stack. Then you change the blending mode of the layers to lighten, and then you save it and you close it. Optionally, you can flatten before you save and close to save on file size. That's all there is to it. If you like this video, I'd love you guys to hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer it for you. And lastly, if you have not subscribed to our channel, we're producing weekly videos on photography and Lightroom and Photoshop and all those great things. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button right down below and get subscribed to our channel. Thanks for watching.